This is my favorite topic, and I've done extensive study on the subject matter on the end of this present evil age and the coming kingdom. And as I like to preface always that I don't know everything, and I keep the right to change my mind if I gain clearer understanding on the various topics as I continue to read and study. But I believe that we must take what is written literally unless there is a very good reason and clear reason not to do so. Jesus's last words to the church clearly tell us that there will be a time of 1,000 years starting about the time of the last trumpet and at the resurrection of the righteous, and that is those who are faithful believers. And these details are confirmed when looking specifically at Matthew 24, Daniel 1, or Daniel, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5, 2 Thessalonians 2, and the book of Revelation. They all have puzzle pieces that give us a more complete picture of the very end of this age and the age coming after that. Those passages complement and confirm one another and build off the important information and prophecy given at the different times to different people. We must look at the whole context of the last seven years prior to the last trumpet and the return of Christ. And then what happens after that? And when we do this, I think that the millennial reign becomes more clear than if just trying to take it out of context based on a few misused texts. Understanding who is resurrected in the two resurrections helps us to understand the timing of these events better. Technically, you could say that the first resurrection is for the righteous, that is the faithful believers, and the second resurrection is for the, quote, wicked, that those who did not follow Messiah and obey his father. But the rest of the dead, those in that second resurrection, are all people who were not resurrected and raptured when Jesus returned, and they are not all evil. That is why these people are judged according to what they have done, as it says and some will gain entrance into the ongoing and eternal kingdom at that time. These people are not judged by faith in Jesus because many of them have never even heard of him, but they are judged by their deeds. How did they live their lives? Those whose deeds did not get their names into the book of life were destroyed forever in the lake of fire, it says, the second death from which nobody returns. So without understanding these two resurrections, we cannot understand the timing of these prophesied events and the millennium. And if we don't have understanding of these two resurrections, we are going to be confused about the thousand years. As I teach, we have to be humble enough to accept the information we've been given as being adequate. Just like Daniel, when he wanted to know more, he was told, I'm not telling you anymore. Just go your way. You're going to die, but I'll raise you up for your reward later. So for whatever reason, God has only given us the limited information that he thinks we need to know to be prepared for uh, the end time here and to not be deceived as this present evil age winds down and his kingdom begins with Messiah's rule along with the saints. We see this in 1 Corinthians 15 and how it reads right along with the book of Revelation. God did not give Daniel or even Jesus all the prophecy and his whole plan, but he did tell Jesus later, as we see in Revelation, and he was given more information then that confirms what was revealed earlier, as well as confirming the promises that were made to Abraham and David. And we see those promises being fulfilled during that millennial reign. And the prophecy in Revelation just gives believers more details. It's added on to what Daniel was given and what was uh, given prior to the book of Revelation. God does not need to repeat everything each time something is talked about. And if we only have a few verses, we must still take heed that what is written is what he meant and what he wanted us to know. And that does not diminish the truth that is spoken even in one or two verses. For example, the return of Christ with the trumpet call and the resurrection of the dead, I believe is only mentioned like three times in 1 Thessalonians 4, and then two passages that repeat the same teaching in Matthew 24 and Mark 13. Just because it's only mentioned twice, nobody takes that as not really being valid. It does not mean that it can't be used as proof 
for what it says. And it can't be used as proof against the thousand years just because something is mentioned a few times. And as Carlos mentioned, the millennium or the thousand years is mentioned six times in the book of Revelation and in relation to different things happening at that same time. Likewise, we must remember that the Bible cannot contradict itself. The premillennial view, meaning that there will be 1,000 years after Jesus returns before the white throne judgment and then God himself coming to earth and living here happily ever after is clear throughout the scripture when we put all the events on his timeline. It is not limited just to Revelation 20. From what I understand, the amillennial view rises and falls on Revelation 24 through 6 in regard to understanding what is meant by resurrection. As I said, understanding that is key. And I believe that they say it is figurative or a metaphor and not a bodily resurrection. Though I think that that would contradict with Revelation 20 through 22. Unlike Romans 6, the Revelation passage is specific. It has specific facts. It is not imagery. And in fact, it references things spoken about in other parts of the book of Revelation. If we look at these two passages in context, we see that there is a difference between straight out facts, like in, Res in Revelation, or using metaphors along with stated facts. Romans is a comparison to what baptism represents and how the believer's commitment affects our lives today, but it also references Jesus' bodily resurrection as well as the believers. So how does one determine what is literal and what is possibly figurative? As with everything we study in the Bible, we have to do that with context, and I think we'll be looking a little deeper at this this evening. And one thing I would caution us with is that we need to be cautious of teachings if they are adding to or taking away from the prophecy in Revelation, as it is stated in Revelation 22. And as Robin, I'm very passionate about this, and I believe that um, we're doing God an injustice, and we're robbing Jesus of his rule and reign, and even ours as well. I believe it's a reward for us at that time. And we see how other things were prophesied in the Old Testament, and those things are taking place during this time, which they cannot be taking place after uh, the white throne judgment because people won't be dying then.